thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your Tree Shelf. And I was going to start doing Friday Reads videos because I find that when I do a wrap up quite late, I can't remember as much as I wanted to say about the books that I read, um, you know, maybe six weeks beforehand. And it's quite nice to do reviews and like smaller sections and also talk about what you're reading, what your plans are. I really like watching Friday Reads videos. So this is the start of Friday Reads. And um, I've got four books to tell you about today that I have finished because I have had quite a few books running concurrently and I've also been trying to read through the books on the Women's Prize and things like that. So the first book I'm going to talk about is this one, Ancestors by Professor Alice Roberts. This is one that I read with Jo, my friend who I buddy read with all the time. And this took us over a month to read just because... Um, we were both reading other things at the same time. So this is talking about pr the prehistory of Britain in seven burials. So there's an introduction to the book, then we go around different parts of Britain, but also there are mentions of um, other parts of the world where there's been significant burials found, and it goes from Stone Age through to the Iron Age, and there's different different things and different customs and different skill sets and things that have been found out about the burials over this time. So each chapter focuses on a different burial and there are a few chapters in the middle where Alice kind of comes out of the history and talks about something that she's visiting to do with the, the burials and things like that. And I found this book was really interesting and I definitely learned a lot about it and there were some parts which were completely fascinating but there were other bits where she would spend a lot of detail on relatively small things where we both felt that it was unnecessary how much detail she sort of or repetition she had on certain things. But the thing that Joe and I both found most annoying was that Alice would step into the narrative with her opinions, which was unnecessary and at times quite offensive. So um, Alice is very much anti any kind of religious belief or faith. And she will jump in with her opinions on that. Not, in, not, not infrequently. And it gets quite... It's unnecessary. I think that for a lot of people, her opinions would be hurtful, but also it doesn't add anything to the book. So she spends a lot of time talking about how we can never be truly objective because we have our own views, beliefs, prejudices, etc. And our views will be based on our previous experiences. And so we have to try and be as objective as possible, but it's not possible to be truly, truly objective. But then she jumps in with her opinions, which kind of contradicts what she's just said and I really felt that if those bits had been taken out we'd have gained rather than lost and some of the bits needed to be edited down and not repeated so often and so for that reason I gave it a three star because whilst it was really interesting in lots of places I found that it was a bit of a slog in other places and there are two other books in a similar series about burials and things but I don't think I'm going to go on and read them just because I wasn't a huge fan of the writing style of this book for the aforementioned reasons. So that was the first thing that I finished and then I have three women's prize books to talk about so one non-fiction and two fiction. So the first one that came into the library it came in so quickly I ordered it on the Tuesday night when the prize was announced and it was there on the Thursday which never happens um, and this is Restless Dolly Maunder by Kate Grenville so I wanted to start with one of the what I perceived as probably being one of the lighter books and also I really love the cover of this but I do think that this cover is the kind of cover that will put a lot of people off. It looks a bit like a contemporary mass market book that a lot of people wouldn't find appealing but so I was having a conversation about this with Joe again and we were talking about the Women's Prize books and I think that sometimes when people are disappointed on booktube with a list I think it's because they want their literary favourites to be on the list and the Women's Prize isn't the female booker prize the women's prize is uh, is supposed to be accessible for everybody and so i think it's right that they put different kinds of books in and they don't just put 16 literary fiction books in there because that might uh, that might be what people on booktube often want but i think 
if the prize is going to have mass appeal bigger than just booktube we need to have a range of different types of books and having books that are easier to read like this one on the list just makes it more inclusive and so i think it's important not to forget that when people um are a bit sort of um unhappy sometimes with the choices that have been made on long lists so I went into this with an open mind and I did really enjoy this book. This is a historical fiction book set in Australia and it's actually based on the story of Kate Grenville's grandmother and we have a picture of them both in here and they look so similar. So we've got a picture of Dolly near the end, I'll find it. So this wonderful picture is of Dolly, the real Dolly and then Kate Grenville is in her author photo and you can really see a resemblance between the two of them which is lovely so this is a really remarkable story really it's about dolly grows up with several siblings in a sheep farming house which is quite poor in a very rural part of australia and she's born in the 1800s and she's really um, academically bright she really wants to go on to be a teacher and her dad says over my dead body like women don't go out to work that is a shame on me if you have to go out to work you know that means I'm not doing my job properly your job's to be at home and make the, the farm and the house run and she never can really get over this hurt that she was told that she couldn't and so she strives for more in her life she's she is restless she can't sit still in one place for too long and she really makes something of herself she battles against the odds she is a very um smart businesswoman and she makes good business choices and investments but at the same time she has to make sacrifices for to, in her household like um she has a very difficult relationship with her children and they find it very hard that they have to keep moving all the time and it does put distance between them. There's problems in her marriage, but she keeps going and she keeps trying to do better. And she's a very a strong person. And there was one bit which I just thought really captured life for women in this period of time. So I'm just going to read out this little section. So it's basically talking about the men who are working on the farm and they had to eat, they had to have plenty to eat. And it was the women's job to make sure that they had enough to eat so telling you about all the food you have to make so it says before you could put butter on the bread you had to churn the cream and before you could churn the cream the milk had to be set out in the pans to separate and before that the cow had to be milked and before you could milk the cow you had to catch her and fetch her in and fill up the feed trough to keep her quiet while you milked her and the bucket had to be scoured and that meant getting the water hot on the back of the stove and that meant lugging the water in then in the evening, the whole thing all over again. And if you were late, the cows let you know about it. And if the milk was off or the butter didn't churn properly, every round of, everyone around the table would let you know about it too. And before you could do any of that, the scones or the meat or the hot water, you had to get a fire going. And before you could do that, you had to riddle out yesterday's ashes, a filthy job. You fill up the wood basket, go out to the chopping block for little pieces to get it going. And before there were any little chips to find, you had to chivy some man to split the wood or do it yourself with your long skirt getting in the way. Because if the stove went cold and there was no fruitcake and no tea, there'd be everyone around the table grizzling at you. No one was going to blame the man who'd forgotten to cut the wood and bring it in. And I just thought that is just day after day after day, all the things that they have to do just to get the food out for the men who are working in the farm and it really gives you a sense of how relentless it is and it goes on after that to describe washing day as well which was in addition to all the other things and raising children and all well, I don't know yeah I don't know how they managed it really um so I really I really enjoyed this book I really was looking forward to picking it up every time I don't think it will be one that stays with me for like a really long time though and so I gave it three point I think it was 3.75 stars I gave this because it was really enjoyable but it didn't blow me away but I thought it was a, a very good read. The second book I read from the fiction list was The Wren the Wren by Anne Enright and the reason I chose this next was because it was free on Spotify and so um, somebody said that on one of the plod alongs which I was really grateful for because um, I didn't know that and that was my first time of listening to an audiobook on Spotify. This one was um, very different to Restless Dolly Maunder. It's an Irish book about a mother and a daughter and their relationship. So we're focusing on two generations. We have Carmel, who is the mum, 
and her daughter Nell. We start with her daughter Nell who is around the age of sort of early 20s and she's seeing a guy in this really horrible toxic relationship which was really frustrating to read about because I was like what are you doing and that section reminded me a bit of Sally Rooney. Um, then we kind of jump out of that story and go back a generation to Carmel, her mum, and we learn about Carmel's upbringing. So Carmel's dad was a famous Irish poet called Phil and he left one day. So that Carmel's mum had breast cancer and Phil just upped and left and went off to America. And the girls, Carmel and her older sister, were left to try and care for their mum and it was quite a difficult household to grow up in. And Carmel's always struggled to form relationships with people. And it talks about that in the book. It talks about her sexual relationships as well. And how the descriptions aren't the most pleasant descriptions. That they always kind of go wrong. And she ends up having a daughter. And she's she's a single mum from the off. So there's never a dad in Nell's life. And it's about Carmel raising Nell and then it's about Nell in the future when she's older as well. When I say older, only only older as in in her 20s, not older, older. So it's about the relationships between parents and children. <clears throat> There's bits of poetry from Phil or that Phil has translated in the, in the, throughout the novel. <sighs> There's also, just as a trigger warning, a bit I had to fast forward in the end, a bit about animal fighting, which was horrible. And I don't know why that was in there, but I had to fast forward that because I couldn't listen to it. Um, the writing is undoubtedly excellent. Did I enjoy the book? Not really. I thought that there were some parts in it which were very astute and some parts which were very funny about like parent-child relationships and sibling relationships. There were bits in there which I laughed at and there were also bits which I found boring and there were bits which I found quite disturbing about some of the relationships in the book and I was looking forward to finishing it in all honesty. So whilst I can totally appreciate why it's been listed for a prize and whilst the writing has really, I can really admire Anna and Wright's talent. I didn't get a sense of enjoyment from this book in the same way as I did with the one before. And so I ended up giving this, well, I kept changing my mind between 2.5 and 3 stars. I think I stuck on 3. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it makes the shortlist because the writing's so good, but it wouldn't be one of my choices. The final book I read was from the non-fiction list, which was How to Say Babylon by Sophia Sinclair, which was by far and away the best book I read um, so far this month. It's absolutely amazing. This is Sophia's memoir about what it was like to grow up in a Rastafari, very strict household in Jamaica. She was born in the same year as me, which so I could really relate to... Um, you know, how old she was at different times and what was what was kind of I mean it was very different growing up in Britain to growing up in Jamaica so there wasn't like comparisons in that way but there were time wise I could see where we were and stuff quite easily and Safia is a poet and you can absolutely tell that by the writing because her writing is so lyrical and beautiful she reads the audiobook herself and her voice is gorgeous and I always think if there's accents in a book it's really nice when you listen to it because you then hear the authenticity of the accents. I would say Jen Campbell does this thing called book maths where she adds two books together to come up with a third book and if we were going to do book maths for this book I would say this is Educated by Tara Westover plus Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Educated because they're both growing up in extremist backgrounds and know my name because Sophia does go through some similar themes but I think the beauty of the writing is quite similar between the two and so if you loved either of those books or both of those books like I did then this one is absolutely for you. So the premise of the of the memoir is Sophia is growing up in Jamaica 
She is in a household with very little money. Her dad is Rastafari and this is something which I knew very little about and I didn't really know much about the history of Jamaica or the terrible things that Britain did in Jamaica when we were colonised it and it does go over those things and Babylon is basically the word for wickedness in the world like for white people, for the West, for um, capitalism like all the kind of bad things in the world um, that have hurt people is, is referred to as Babylon and Sophia's father is trying to protect his family from Babylon but at the same time, he's getting more and more extremist and his what he practices doesn't align with what he preaches a lot of the time. But the family can't question that because then he goes into this like complete rage if anyone questions him. And he has had a very difficult upbringing. So has Sophia's mum. And that very much feeds into how they raise the children as well. Sophia and her siblings are all extremely academically gifted. They work really hard. They're very high achievers. Um, and they, Sophia has this just love of poetry from a very young age. And she really retreats into books and poems when things are really, really difficult for her at home. And it's amazing, like how she's come from this very rural and um, poor background and she's really used all of her gifts and talents to achieve to achieve the most incredible things in her life and her story was just how she tells a story I cannot put into words how amazing she's she's tell at, at telling her story um I think if you're interested in family stories coming of age stories other cultures or other places that you don't know much about and you want to learn more about and also kind of extremism then I think this is uh, the book for you it's, it's wonderful and I don't feel like I'm doing it justice with how I'm describing it because it's so so good and that's 100% a five star read from me so that's the things that I have read so far and then what I'm reading at the moment I have started Matrescence by Lucy Jones on Audible which is another one of the women's prize for non-fiction books and um, Matrescence is basically about becoming a mother and it's all about the cultural, physical, mental, societal things that happen and the things we do and don't talk about and it's evidence-based and so far Lucy Jones has got a very interesting writing style where I'm really engaged with what she's saying and I can relate to a lot of what she's saying as well so I've only started that yesterday about an hour and a half into that and I'm finishing off Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros which I've got about 100 or so pages to go and then after that my plans are to read my book club book which is Crossing to Safety by Wallace Stegner and also my TBR spin slash um, reads a good challenge um which is going to be The Descendants by Carrie Hart Hemmings. So that's the plans I've got for the rest of the month. I've got The Maiden on my wait, waiting for me at the library, which is another one of the Women's Prize for Fiction books. I'm not going to pick that up yet because I don't want to add any time pressure on. I want to just read a bit more before I pick that up. So that's what I've been reading over the last like sort of fortnight. But I'm going to be doing, hopefully, weekly updates from this point on so it won't be quite such a long catch-up. But if you've read any of these or you want to, let me know or let me know what you've been reading over the month of March so far. And I look forward to hearing from you and I will speak to you all soon. Bye!